And Uthman radiallahu anhu, that he strived, he was successful in his dunya, and he also strived and was successful in the akhirah, in which he was given the glad tidings of Jannah by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam on multiple occasions. If anything, that glad tiding that was given to them, that promise that was given to them, only made them strive even more. For they didn't do it for the people, or what the people would think. They did it because of the expectations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From the most important of his characteristics, radiallahu anhu, is first and foremost his deep faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we mentioned that Uthman radiallahu anhu, he mentioned about himself that he never tasted alcohol in Jahiliya or Islam. He never fornicated in Jahiliya or Islam. He never bowed to an idol in Jahiliya or Islam. He never did any of these ill-mannered conducts in Jahiliya, let alone to them, for him to do them in Islam. So his conduct, his manners were already there. His preservation of his chastity was already there. His preservation of his body, of his mind, of his soul was already there. And then bring Islam to that, and that's where you come with Uthman radiallahu anhu. The angels are shy from him. Imagine a man, the angels, because of his shyness, because of his haya, because of his position with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the angels themselves are shy from him. What a status. What a position to be in. His sincerity, efficiency, courage, asceticism, the zuhud, even though he was from the rich and famous and known for his richness, he still had asceticism. Turning away from the dunya, his courage, his advice, his humility, sacrifice, forbearance, patience, high ambition, resolve, strong will, justice, problem solving, ability, ability to teach and prepare leaders and the list goes on and on and on of the characteristics of Uthman radiallahu anhu. Knowledge is the best and the greatest weapon that the person can have. And where did Uthman obtain this knowledge from? From his close companionship with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Observing the actions, the teachings of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Learning from how he was with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The greatest example the greatest teacher was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And one hadith that he mentions to show you the importance of learning, receiving, is the hadith that he mentions with regards to the wudu. Where Uthman ibn Affan, he called for water and he did wudu, rinsing his mouth and nose, then washing his face three times, his forearms three times, each then wiping his head and the tops of his feet. Then he smiled and said to his companions, Are you not going to ask me why I am smiling? They said, Why are you smiling, O Amir al-Mu'mineen? He said, I saw the Prophet ﷺ calling for water near this spot. Then he did wudu as I have done. Then he smiled. And he's, he's repeating exactly what the Prophet ﷺ did. Nabi ﷺ told the Sahaba at that time, Aren't you going to ask me why I am smiling? They said, Why are you smiling, O Rasulullah? He said, if a person calls for water for wudu and washes his face, Allah will erase every sin caused by his face. When he washes his forearms, the same applies. When he washes his head, the same applies. When he washes his feet, the same applies. That's why Nabi Wasallam in another hadith narrated by Uthman, where he mentions the wudu every time, every action three times. And then he says that the Prophet Wasallam he said, whoever does the wudu like I did, and then prays two rak'ah, Two rak'ah without speaking to yourself. The mind goes where? The mind goes, mind goes home, goes to the work, goes to the wife, goes to here, goes to the children, goes to the business. The person says Allahu Akbar and he begins to talk with themselves. He said two rak'ah without having that inner talk, that inner speech, that inner thinking other than Allah, his sins will be forgiven. But the, the condition is what? Complete attendance in the prayer standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His forbearance is one of the main characteristics of Uthman radiallahu anhu and forbearance 
is one of the pillars of wisdom. It was narrated that Uthman bought some land from a man. Then the man disappeared. Then Uthman radiallahu anhu says, we haven't seen you in a while to come and to take your money. We've made a deal, you need to come and pick up your money. So the man changed his mind and he didn't want to what? Complete the deal. So Uthman said to him, why are you not taking the money? He said, you did not give me the right price and everyone is telling me that you did not give me the right price. Everyone is telling me that it's worth a lot more than that. That you gave me a small price for it. So he said to him, is that why you don't want to go ahead with the purchase, with the buying, with the selling? He said, yes. He said, choose between the land and between the money. Then he said, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said the hadith that Allah admitted to paradise a man who was easy going in buying and selling. Not only in buying, not only when the Prophet is towards you, easy going in buying and in selling. Also when you are selling. When you see someone who is in need, someone who is in a situation, in a position where they are able to spend that much money, that much money, but they are in need of the product, you're easy going. This is a character, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, there's a certain transaction in the Sharia which is called Al-Iqala. Al-Iqala is when I sold someone this phone for instance. Muslim brother, he came, he bought this phone, he went home, and the man, he comes back, I can't buy it anymore. Can you give me back my money? Ya yeah, you've already bought it. You've already paid for it. You've taken it for a week. Al-Iqala is when that person comes back and the product is the same, of course. Yani. No, the phone is as it is or the product is as it is. Al-Iqala, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful and puts in high position the one who does Iqala. That when that person comes and he's unable to go through with the purchase, even though he's already paid, he says, I need that money. You say, here brother, here's your money. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy on you. Take your money back. And this is a small example. Imagine someone comes and he buys a car of you. This is where the Iman comes in. Because you don't have to. You don't have to give him back his money. You don't have to do that. But because you see the situation that he's in, and you understand it, and you give it back to them, Wallahi, my dear brothers in Islam, as mentioned in the hadith, Nabi says, whoever assists and aids the trip up, the mistake, the fault, he bought it, he shouldn't have bought it. Whoever aids and helps his brother in that, in his dunya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do the same for them in the akhirah. And many of the different stances and many of the different positions that Uthman radiallahu anhu was in, that show us his humbleness and his humility to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Uthman radiallahu anhu he used to get his wudu for himself when he would get up to pray in the night. Even though there were servants. Their days, there was no such thing as taps. So the person has to go out to fetch their water and to bring it. He used to go by himself. So it was said to him, why don't you tell your servant to do it for you? He said, no, the night is for them to rest. And even to the extent that Nabi Wasallam he mentions in the hadith, that if you have a servant and that servant is cooking food for you that you like, he said it's from the characteristics of the believer to first and to allow the servant to eat from that food. Modesty and chastity. These were some of the most famous uh, characteristics of Uthman that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala adorned him with. And it was a source of goodness and blessing, kindness and compassion. Uthman was one of the most modest men. Radiallahu anhu. Al-Hassan al-Basri, he said, Uthman and his intense modesty saying he would be in a house with the door closed and he would not take off his garment in order to pour water over himself. And modesty would prevent him from standing up straight. And even when he's closed behind closed doors in the shower, he would still not unclothe himself or completely uncover himself عنه, from his modesty and the haya of him, the generosity of Uthman radiallahu anhu, that he was the one who funded the battle of Tabuk, he was the one who bought the well in Medina that used to be, the people used to have to pay money to drink from it, he went and bought it for the sake of Allah, he was the first one to buy the extension for the Masjid and Nabawi, he was the one that it was narrated that he freed over 2,400 slaves 
during his lifetime and it was said that he'd free once every week for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he would give and he would donate and he would give generosity for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not only towards those whom were in need but also to his family members and so forth and this was one of the things that they attacked Uthman about at the end of his life why are you giving money to your family members and they accused him of giving them money from Baytul Mal and Uthman didn't take any money from Baytul Mal being a Khalifa because he wasn't in need Abu Bakr and Umar they were in need to take a, a wage يعني, for them being the Khalifa the Uthman wasn't in need of that wage he gave up his time and he wasn't in need of that wage and the many things that show his generosity radiallahu anhu his courage people picture Uthman as being that weak companion no Uthman radiallahu anhu was one of the courageous sahaba radiallahu anhu and people use upon him the one thing that they tried to use upon Uthman he didn't go to Badr yeah, the majority of the sahaba radiallahu anhu didn't fight in the battle of Badr in the battle of Badr there was no intention to go out to fight in the first place the wife the daughter of the Prophet sallam was sick, Ruqayya radiallahu anha when Nabi sallam ordered him to stay at home and then she died in the absence of her father and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he was the one who during the treaty of Hudaybiyah he was the one who went in to Quraysh alone to negotiate with them no protection, nothing and he fought side to side with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the expeditions that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had taken part in. People mistake humbleness, modesty for cowardness. No, Uthman was the furthest thing from being a coward, but he was very gentle in his approach to the believers and to those who were under his command, and he was modest in the way that he dealt with things, but that doesn't mean that he wasn't courageous radiallahu anhu. And the many many different characteristics that go on his justice the worship he was known for his worship radiallahu anhu he would fast every day even towards the end of his life he would fast every day he would wake up in tahajjud every day the quran would not leave his hand he died while being in a state of fasting and reading the quran that was his life it was known and narrated as we mentioned before that he prayed and he recited the whole quran in one rak'ah so he was from those who had their share of the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of these characteristics come in into the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to be able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way that he should be worshipped. The fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala weeping over himself. Whenever he would see the graves, he would weep. Whenever the, the day of judgment will be remembered, his beard would be covered in his tears, would become wet from his tears when he would see person buried or being buried or the grave he would start to weep they say you always weep when you see the grave and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam he said this is the beginning of the stages of the hereafter whoever his journey in the grave goes well then the rest will go well whoever's journey in the grave goes bad then that which is to come is worse and the grave is the first step in departing this dunya that's why it's the place that the ground the person is placed in is the scariest position that the person is going to be in the first step to that life that is going to come and the many other characteristics from the different characteristics of Uthman Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh